um, is an artist <laughs> and an organiser of artists' events, cultural events. Um, and today is going to talk to us about her involvement in the Black Art Group, both as a member, um, as an artist, but also as an organiser of exhibitions. Uh, so I'm going to hop around a bit between showing images um, on the laptop and uh, showing you some slides. Um, why am I here today? I'm talking primarily about the Black Art Group. Uh, it's a very personal reflection of my experience of the Black Art Group and um, may not be 100% art historically accurate. So I'm looking over there into the top right hand corner of the, of, of the audience because I'm very happy to say that there are a couple of people here from the Black Art Group and from that era who will be able to please do interject and say no, that was 1986 or whatever. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> so it's a, it's a kind of personal reflection. Um, okay, I'm, 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 wasting, I'm wasting a good 30 minute time. So I'm going to start by flicking through um, the document on, on screen, which is uh, the Black Art Group scrapbook. Um, actually, before I do that, I should say who, who the Black Art Group was, um, what the Black Art Group was. Um, the Black Art Group was a group of black students. Um, I would say that I would describe us as children of the Windrush era. So our, our parents all arrived here, here in the UK in the sort of 50s and 60s. Um, and um, we were students that, that were active uh, during the early 80s. Um, the reason I think that the group is important and worth talking about is because we were part of a wider thing that was happening in terms of people of that generation uh, and from that particular background of oh, hell. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, yeah. So I am going to hop around and kind of keep this moving. Um, um, and the work that we were producing was very much around our political awakening uh, and there's, there was there's so much of that was happening culturally at that time, not just in terms of visual arts, but a whole kind of spectrum of stuff. Um, and it seems like the moment there's, it, because it's 30 years ago, there's a moment of kind of reflection and looking back at what all that stuff was and whether it's changed anything and um, how important it, 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 it was. Is, um, anyway, let me stop rambling on and just show you some of the. Um, and as I'm, as I'm flicking through, I will tell you about my experience of the Black Art Group and my history of the Black Art Group. Um, so, very, um, so the introduction, this, this, this document that I'm flicking through, um, that I'm calling the scrapbook, is a document that would, the, the, the group members would have sent to galleries to introduce us and to say, this is who we are, we'd like a, an exhibition in your space, please. Um, so we don't have time to kind of to, 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 to talk to talk through every single paragraph of it, but this is kind of a list of exhibitions that the Black Art Group um, organised and took part in, and, and it's very important to say that for the most part, the members of the group were the students who were also organising their own exhibitions uh, and, and doing most of that work ourselves. Apart from our one member that I remember, who wasn't a, a practitioner. Uh, uh, Mr. Eric Pemberton, who was a kind of elder statesman who kind of kept us all in check during the, the early years. So there's a list of exhibitions there. I know already that that list is not com complete, in that there were a couple of exhibitions after Africa Centre 1983. Uh, the first um, exhibition that's listed there is 1982. Um, oh, I've just realised something. Um, this, this document is, refer, is not referring to the very first exhibitions that this group um, organised. Um, so I should, should um, talk a little bit about that. Um, in, I think, 1980, two art students happened to be, two black art students <coughs> happened to be um, on a foundation course at Lanchester 
Polit Lanchester Polytechnic, which was in Coventry, and they decided to get together and invite other students to form this group. And the first exhibition, as far as I am aware, and I'm looking up into that corner, was in 1981. Is that right? Yes. It is. Um, and the loose association of art students that joined that group exhibited over the next four years. And the last exhibition, as far as I understand, is at Winterbourne House in Birmingham University in 1984. Um, and the group membership. Now, this is something that's been debated publicly and contested. Uh, and I think everybody has a slightly different version of what the membership was. I would say that it was, it was fluid. Um, when I joined the Black Art Group in the summer of 1982, um, I was literally, I, I had not started my foundation course yet. So I was going to be starting foundation that September. And the way that I joined the group was that I um, received an invitation to an exhibition that was at the Icon Gallery. And I went to the Icon Gallery and I met a group member, Keith Piper, and he invited me to come to a meeting of Black Art students. And I went to that meeting and the following October, that group was organizing the first national convention of black artists. And at that convention, which happened in Wolverhampton, I met Sonia Boyce, Nabela Himid, the Black Audio Film Collective, and a whole list of artists and art students that descended on Wolverhampton from the far reaches of, of the UK to discuss the form and function of black art. And for me, as an 18-year-old, not even art student yet, it was the most exciting, singular moment of my entire life to that point, to be sitting at a desk, not dissimilar to this, and, and to meet and greet those people as they came to me. I'm not really showing you this scrapbook. Um, so, <laughs> First exhibition, I'm, I'm literally going to just go through these pages very, very quickly because we don't really have time to read through them. Uh, I haven't actually talked about this at all in public that I can remember and, and I certainly haven't looked at these images for probably 20 years. So you have to forgive me if I kind of uh, am over-interested in them. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, so I know that we haven't got a lot of time. Um, so, so this is a group of students. I was the youngest member. Um, the other members at the, the time that we were organising the, the convention, the other members couldn't have been more than about 21. So I'm 18, they're 21, 22. Uh, this, these are some extracts from, from, our, um, from the visitor books that we had at the exhibitions. And it's really fascinating. Uh, and, and over the last few days, as some members of the Black Art Group will know, because I've been texting them at like 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, I have been unpacking things that are in my attic and reading things and coming across uh, names. In the, uh, in, you know, amongst things and just making some connections that I hadn't even made yet. So that artist is somebody, that person whose name I undermine there is an artist that, we would, that I would later on work with that I hadn't met in whenever this was, 1983, I think. 1982. Um, I hadn't met this person there. Um, so, so there's all these connections that are suddenly being made. I, I'm just thinking of, of Sonia's question to Biddy about the significance of archiving. Uh, having tried to find images of my own work from 1982 <coughs> and failed miserably, um, I know they exist, but I just don't have them in my attic. Or if I have got them in my attic, I can't find them right now. Um, I do think, let me back up again a bit. Before I got to um, Wolverhampton to have this meeting in the summer of 1982, <coughs> um, 
I had been doing my A-levels, <coughs> and I had said to my, uh, to my teacher, who was a lovely, liberal, um, progressive photographer who was involved, where is Pity? Who was involved probably in setting up the arts lab in Birmingham. Um, so I say to him, mm, I have to do a project, written project for A-level. Think I'll write about black artists. That's what I'm going to do. And he says to me, oh, there aren't any. He didn't say, I don't know any. He didn't say there might be some in America. What he said was, <laughs> there are no artists. And he said that with, in all sincerity and out of a sort of kind of paternal sort of worrying that I might not find enough material to write this. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the context within which I then get to meet the following summer this group of radical black artists. You know, and, and get to, 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 to be involved in organising this event. Sorry, I am doing what I didn't want to do, which is to kind of wander all over the place with this material. Um, so, so, where have we got to? 1982, summer organised convention. Then, oh, here we are. <clears throat> so it's a call that was put out to other art students and it, and it worked. People came from all over the country. Um, I did say this to, to Claudette Johnson, who was a member of the group, on the way here. I said I was going to help share this with you. Um, that we were having this convention, we called it a convention, not a conference, at uh, Wolverhampton Polytechnic and at the time a member of the faculty of Wolverhampton um, College uh, Polytechnic was Anisha Kapoor. Yes, <laughs> yes, Anisha Kapoor and we were, we were talking about the fact that even though he was a member of the faculty he did not attend our conference and how interesting that, that is in terms of some of the arguments and debates around uh, what black art is. Do you need to say more about this stuff? It's there, it, it exists, it's a, a record of some of the activity that, that we took part in and I'm hoping that at some point some of this material will be made available more publicly. Um, yeah, so that, um, it's in, it's, so the archiving is important because um, young black people, and, and everybody, in fact, not just black people, should not be in the situation that I was in, in you know, at 17, uh, i.e., you know, there aren't any black artists, and being told that there aren't any black artists, or that there aren't any black women artists, or there aren't any, whatever, whatever it is. The, 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 for me, the whole thing about archiving and history is that it, it, it's actually food for, for, for the people that are coming next. And it's important to be able to reflect on what's happened before in order to, to progress. Really. Sorry, that sounds a bit preachy. I think we've done with that. I just want to reiterate the fact that I was in a pre-foundation when I first joined the Black Art Group. And I think that's, there's something really, you know, as a person that made that piece of work, I feel a bit nervous. But in terms of the idea that a group of students can or did just write to galleries and say, um, this, is our, this is our manifesto, uh, we are important, we are significant, we are doing this, show this work, you know, I just... And it is, it's, this is probably first year work, or maybe even foundation. So I'm just going to skip through my work very quickly. Uh, I don't know how clearly you can see that. So at the time that I was uh, foundation 
all this is happening simultaneously is meeting with back up in members and reading about Sojourner Truth. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Sojourner Truth is a, um, uh, an abolitionist and campaigner for women's su suffrage from, uh, from the US. And there's this very interesting passage about her where she's addressing a suffrage um, campaign and she is saying she kind of uh, ripped open her <coughs> dress to reveal her breasts to say, you know, I am a woman as well, so I have a right to be here. So I was making lots of images at that time, uh, kind of, which were about that particular moment. Uh, so the other thing that I want to say about joining that group and how important it was to me is that it was a place where making that kind of statement was being encouraged. Uh, and I think the other place that it was being encouraged for me personally was in the work of some of the curators and activists that were, that were organising exhibitions of, of women, of black women's work specifically. And it, um, repeatedly today, I've, um, people have talked about things like the fact that video is now a collectible thing. It's, it's, you know, it's already redundant technology. And, uh, you know, standing here and saying that, you had, that I felt the need 30 years ago to make work about identity, you know, it, it may seem a very, it, may, it feels now possibly obvious that you, that you would make work that is driven by your own identity. But at the time, it was a really difficult thing to do. It was very difficult to be the only black person in the entire art college, probably. And it was very difficult to make work that had that kind of overt political thing because, because the kind of liberal uh, left um, were, were really uncomfortable with that. They were really uncomfortable with the note, the idea that you had to, that, that, that we were feeling that we specifically had to say, I'm black and I have something to say about the condition of blackness. Uh, so, so that was kind of, a, a, you know, more so I think than in our art college environment. Uh, so this is a piece of work that I made called Art History. And uh, the images on the right are uh, disparate images. So, for example, there's an image that is um, an, a, a, photo, a photograph of a piece of, of a painting that's really, that was made by the artist painter Simon Alexander. So that's a self-portrait by Simon Alexander. Uh, this is a, a, a ceramicist at work. So there's a kind of collection of um, women, black women, who have made or are making work. Uh, and then the image, so that the three-dimensional thing on the, the left-hand side is a vase and the crocheted uh, case that the vase is standing in was made by my mum and then dipped into sugar water to make it stiff. And, and, and that kind of bit of iconography was the kind of thing that you would see in a Caribbean home. Um, and, um, so myself and lots of artists of that time were using that, that kind of, um, you know, that, 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 those kind of, that kind of iconography in our work and the piece is called Art History. Okay, so I'm going to show a few slides of um, other members of, of the Black Art Group's work. Um, I do have some PDFs and some digital images back on the laptop, but I'm, I'm going to just say it by ear as to whether I can or skip it by that time. Too. <coughs> um, the purpose of this really is to just give, for those of you that don't know, uh, some kind of flavour of what the Black Art Group did. Um, I've tried to, to stick to images that are from 81 to 84, that's been really, really difficult. So where they're not from 81 to 84, I'll just say, I'll own up and say then that's not from 84. Um, so this is an image um, 
I thought at Johnson, it is charcoal on paper. The first time I saw this image, I believe, was in 1982 at the uh, convention in Wolverhampton. And um, because as, as part of the convention, we also had uh, an exhibition of, 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 of artists and mostly students' work. I'm just going to flick through these images um, to give you a sense of some of the things that were being made. Um, this is another piece by Claudette. Uh, some of these slides are actually um, go later than 84 and go up to about 87, I believe. This image is actually from an exhibition that I organised of Claudette's work at the Black Art Gallery where I worked in two, I did two stints at the Black Art Gallery. The first was uh, in 1845. I took a year out of my degree course at the time and I came to London uh, to, and, 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 and um, took part in lots and lots and lots and lots of activity, including um, an exhibition that was at the ICA called The Thin Black Line which um, was organised by Rebecca Hindit and she, I think, apart from joining the Black Art Group, the other kind of major thing that happened to me in the 80s in terms of shaping ideas around art and being an artist and what content might be was, was, was working with the brain. Um, that I want to say when I'm looking at Claudette's work, again, just remembering the impact of this work in when I first encountered it and since. Um, do, um, when we, when we, when we organised the convention in 82, interestingly, I've been listening to um, some audio tape of the, of the convention, so there's probably about five audio tapes of the presentations that happened at that convention. One of the key speakers that day was Rashid Areen. And he presented this really contentious um, presentation about what the <coughs> and, and, the, and for him, and I am going to kind of vulgarise his, his thesis, uh, and he's not here, so he won't be For him, black art was is radical political work. It is not work made by black people. Um, it, um, his thesis was that, um, for example, so he made a comparison. He said, not all female artists are feminists. And in absolutely the same way, not all black artists uh, make black art. Um, and Claudette Johnson also made a presentation at that, in that space. Uh, and she was the only woman on the panel, because it was 1982. <laughs> and we, we used to let that kind of thing happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she very bravely got up and spoke in that room with some quiet about her own work, she showed her work, she talked about its evolution, she made references to other pieces of work, some historically uh, well-known and some historically not very well-known images of black women. Uh, and so, you know, so, so for me, listening to those tapes, something has happened to the lights. Could we get them back to what they were doing before? Because when I'm looking at the audience now, I'm going, I'm, I, can't, I can't see. Thank you very much. Uh, so for me, listen to those tapes again. Those are the two key things that get the hairs on the back of my neck standing up when I listen. Is, is, is Claudette talking about her actual practice? Not whether she's black or not, but, you know, what, what she's drawing on her practice. And Rashid, just laying it out there uh, to an audience of, of, of black people who were not necessarily making the work that
that he wanted to see. So that it was really just, you know, who's people's time. And it was a contentious event. Nobody thought anyone, but it was very, very contentious. Right. There's a gap here because I'm I'm going to apologise to Keith now because he sent me digital images, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get over there, Keith. So this is an image uh, by Keith Piper. Um, I'm just going to talk as if nobody's read any history for the past 30 years. So do, I do apologise if I'm telling you things that you already know. So uh, there was a, a very famous moment when uh, 13... Uh, young people were killed in a fire. Um, we've never actually had a, 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 an answer to how this whole thing happened, but at the time, um, yeah, I, mean, I think I think you can get a sense of how um, uh, how powerful a piece of work like this um, was, but also how. Um, contentious in making that kind of work was. I don't know if you can get a sense of the second thing, because I think now perhaps we are more familiar with seeing this type of imagery. We understand, you know, there's a kind of, the, 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 there has been a debate, we can discuss whether, to what extent, uh, we can discuss to, to, to what extent that, that debate is, is over or has been co-opted, but at the time it really was, um, It, it was a difficult thing to make this kind of work. Uh, yeah. I think this book is called The Body Quality. I'm looking at Keith and he's taking photographs. Yeah. So I'll, just, I'll call it that. I'm just going to call things names that I'll name myself. Um, so this is this image. You can, can you read the text there? To you, I was always just the body. I can't read myself. The marketable muscle for your entertainment, the good dancing boy. You, you human yourself over my sexuality, speculating as to the size of my whole walls. Uh, I was your best fantasy and your worst fear, everything to you but human. I can't read that one, Fred. That's a really bad slide, which probably means that I took a photograph and I'm very sorry. <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm going to end this section. How much time have I got? Five minutes. I'm going to end this section. <laughs> sorry. Uh, with some images from an exhibition that I organised at the Black Art Gallery in 1986. The exhibition was called Some of Us Are Brave. Uh, five minutes is just not very much time. Um, so I'll just, I'll flick through and try to, to kind of tell you a little bit. It, it, well, basically it's an exhibition of black women artists at the Black Art Gallery. Uh, this is by an artist called Audrey West. Mowbray of Duncourt, uh, who at the time was a student, I believe, still. She was at, oh God, where was she at? South, very, Wimbledon, Wimbledon. <laughs> and by this point, there were some little cadres of, of students in in art schools around London in particular. So there was a little cadre at Wimbledon and there was another little cadre at uh, Goldsmiths. You're looking at me bemused. Yeah, so, so you know, Mowbray, uh, Dunker and um, Amanda Holliday were both at Wimbledon together. This is a piece by Amanda Holliday. Um, and this piece is called Half Human. This is a piece by Maud Salter. Maud's contribution to the exhibition was a sort of a, um, a collage of 
in images from her life, really. So this is a painting that she painted, and I think this is age six. If I look at my notes, then it's there. Um, and then accompanying that were this kind of collage of other images from, from, from her life. There is so much more to say about this exhibition, about posting it in the Black Art Gallery, about how different spaces had different ethoses and, you know, all of that. There's just not enough time here. Uh, this is a piece by Amanda Holliday. It's the floor piece. It's very, very long, so I'm going to show it to you in sections. Um, and it's called There's No Black in the Union Jack. just writing There Ain't No Black in the Union Jack and he, he lived up the road from the gallery and he used to pop in <laughs> yeah? and he popped in to see the exhibition and, and looked at the Madden's piece and like, he wanted it for the copyright book obviously. Uh, I don't think it happened though, but a little anecdote. Oh, have I done it? Fantastic, so and in time as well. <laughs> <laughs>